Ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning uh, and welcome to this year's uh, Cyber Defense uh, Pledge uh, Conference. I'm really delighted to be here together with all of you, and I thank the hosts, uh, Italy and the United States, for their hospitality today. This year, <coughs> uh, Euro Atlantic security has been rocked by President Putin's war against democratic sovereign Ukraine. Just yesterday, I met with uh, Ukrainian troops uh, being trained in the United Kingdom. Brave young uh, Ukrainians who have volunteered uh, to defend their own country. Ukraine has uh, driven back Russia's invasion through the tenacity of its people and the support of NATO allies. We will keep supporting Ukraine for as long as it takes. Part of Russia's aggression is an invisible war in cyberspace. In the hours immediately before uh, Russian forces crossed the border, cyber attacks struck Ukrainian government departments, the military and uh, emergency services. The Viasat satellite network was forced offline cutting communications for Ukraine's police, military, and intelligence services. <clears throat> this attack caused collateral damage beyond Ukraine, affecting wind turbines and interrupting internet access for tens of thousands of people across Europe. Since then, attacks <clears throat> have continued. Data wiping attacks have targeted Ukraine's government, commercial, and energy sectors and the cyber attack on the railway system tried to disrupt not only the transport of military supplies to the front, but also the evacuation of Ukrainian citizens. They tried, but they failed. They failed because Ukraine has proven to be a formidable opponent and because of NATO's strong support. <clears throat> we have been working to strengthen Ukraine's cyber defenses for years with training and information and intelligence sharing. For example, Ukraine has access to NATO's malware information sharing platform, where experts exchange information about threats and responses in real time. Cyber is constantly a contested space, and the line between peace, crisis, and conflict is blurred. That is why NATO has taken the threat uh, to cyberspace from state and non-state actors so seriously for so long, and why we have taken determined steps to guard against cyber attacks. It is key to our collective defense. Cyber activities can trigger our collective defense clause, Article 5, the bedrock of our collective defense where an attack on one ally is an attack on all allies. Cyber is now a domain of operations equal to those of land, sea, air, and space. And a number of allies have offered the use of the national cyber effects. Through NATO's uh, Cyber Defense Pledge, allies have increased investments in cyber and enhance their skills and capabilities to implement their national strategies. NATO also conduct regular exercises, including our flagship cyber coalition exercise in Estonia later this month, the biggest exercise in the world, where more than 40 allies and partners will practice defending against a broad range of different cyber attacks. Our hosts, Italy and the United States, are both excellent examples of strong cyber defenses. Earlier this year, President Biden signed legislation to track cyber attacks and ransomware payments across America. So authorities can rapidly deploy resources to help those being attacked, spot trends, and warn other potential victims. And in May, Italy published its new national cybersecurity strategy, accompanied by several different initiatives, such as the establishment 
of the National Cyber Security Agency and the uh, development of the Italian cloud strategy. Examples of how allies take this very seriously. These and many similar initiatives across the whole alliance are making our nations stronger and more resilient to cyber attacks. NATO is a unique platform where allies <clears throat> share information, highlight concerns, exchange best practices and consider our collective responses. In September, the North Atlantic Council strongly condemned the recent cyber attack on Albania's national information infrastructure, while NATO staff uh, went to uh, Tirana and provided support. Albania and other allies attributed this attack to Iran. This is an example of how NATO allies are coming together and responding with one voice. NATO also works closely with the European Union on cyber issues. Our, our cyber defense, defenders share information about cyber threats and take part in each other exercises, including NATO's cyber coalition. We also work closely with partner nations such as Ukraine and Georgia with our Indo-Pacific partners, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand. And we also work closely with private companies, which have played a key role in defending Ukrainian cyberspace. Starlink satellites enable secure communications and internet access. Microsoft and Amazon were able to upload Ukraine's government ministries to the cloud just as its servers were being targeted by Russian shelling. YouTube and social media companies have blocked or restricted Russian state media and uh, troll accounts. Cooperation between governments and tech companies has increased significantly. For instance, NATO and Microsoft exchange information to mitigate the effects or malware attacks on allies and on Ukraine. And we agreed at the Madrid uh, uh, summit in June to take our partnership with industry further, expanding our cooperation to develop online standards and norms of behavior. Cyberspace should not be a wild west free for all. All allies agree that fundamental rights and international law apply just as much online as they do offline. And that we need principles of responsible use that reflect our democratic values and human rights. However, our competitors do not share our values and are using new technologies with no regard for human rights or international law. In 1949, President Truman described NATO as a shield against aggression and the fear of aggression. Today, that shield extends to cyberspace. The threat from cyberspace is real and it is growing. That is why our cyber defense pledge is so important. So I call on allies to recommit to cyber defense with more investment, more expertise, and enhanced cooperation. This is a vital part of our collective defense. And we are all in this together. So I wish you all the best for your discussions today. Your work here matters for the safety and the security of our one billion citizens across Europe and North America. So once again, thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you.